Hello to you, hello to you my friend. Hope everything's going well with you. Yeah. So I've been looking forward to doing this today. A book tour guided book video. Uh, every now and then because I'm often filming in front of a library bookshelfing. There come some requests of me doing a book tour. And I have done a few in the past. But now before we get to Christmas. I'm going to do one yet again, and this time I have chosen a few different books than the ones I usually focus on. So hopefully that will, this will be enjoyable to the people who have watched my previous book videos as well. Now there are one or two books that I have shown before too, but you know. So I've taken the books which I want to focus on today and put them up there for me so I can easily access them and pick them down from the bookshelf. Yeah, okay. I'm probably going to do it like I pick them off the bookshelf and then put them on the couch back there and uh, then pick, take one and one. And there are primarily six or seven books I'm going to be talking about today and this will probably be like the final book video before New Year. So. For those of you who enjoy book tour, guided book tour videos, enjoy. Let's just begin. Yeah. I haven't really decided on the order in which I'm going to. Usually before I film, I decide the order, which order I want to take out the books in. But today I decided I just wanted to take it as we go along. So I'm just going to choose now. So we have a few very different books to focus on today, but I'm going to begin with Ful Phoenix. It says in Norwegian, but in English it is known as Mocking Jay. This is Mocking Jay. And this is the third book of the Hunger Games franchise. And I'm not going to be talking about the third book, but rather about the Hunger Games franchise. Uh, it's a very famous dystopian franchise. And uh, the so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Hunger Games. If yeah. So. Okay. So uh, the story of the Hunger Games follows a teen, Katniss Everdeen, who lives in a dystopian future America. And um, it's not really a nice future version of America, it's a really dystopian version of America where teenagers, where people, where teens are forced to participate. They are sort of chosen by, at random and then forced to participate in a deadly contest called the Hunger Games. And this future version is run by a brutal regime. And this reality constant contest, this sort of reality television contest, sees that various teenagers compete and have to kill each other until only one is left standing. So it's really dystopic, really dystopian literature. But so if you enjoy futuristic dystopian literature, and, and this is for you, the books have even been filmatized. And there's even been a, been a prequel movie, I believe, so it's a really famous, successful franchise. But, uh, uh, mm. And of course, it also goes into the themes of tyranny, rebellion, autocracy, revolution, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm not going to spoil any of the details, but if you enjoy that sort of stuff, then, well, this book series is for you. So what to go with next? So we're moving on from fiction to history. This is a book called for 1814, The Year of Miracles. It's a Norwegian book. I don't believe you can get this book in English. I believe it's only Norwegian. I apologize for any of you who may want to read this but in English, but I don't believe this book exists in other languages than Nordic or Norwegian languages. So, um, uh, 1814 is a very important year in Norwegian, uh, in Norwegian history. I'm going to talk about it. It's called the Year of Miracles for a reason. 
So all us people who are born and raised in Norway know this story and know what 1814 means. It is one of the historical years in Norwegian history. I just, this book is kind of heavy, so I'm just going to put it over there. But you can see here some of the 19th century soldiers. Um, you know, and you can see a building. You can see it's really early 19th century sort of stuff. Mm. So the year 1814 is called the year of miracles in Norwegian history because it is the year when Norway finally gained freedom from Denmark because Norway had been ruled by Denmark for 400 years, more than 400 years in a period of Norwegian history which is called the 400 years night. And in 1814, due to an extraordinary set of circumstances, Norway finally got its own constitution and, became, and sort of went on to the path to become a more independent, free country. So what happened was that, uh, you know, back in the early 19th century, there was the Napoleonic Wars and Denmark-Norway, uh, because Norway and Denmark were won in a way. Denmark ruled Norway, so Norway just had to go along with whatever side Denmark was on. <laughs> and uh, Denmark-Norway fought on the side of Napoleon. But as you probably know, Napoleon did not win the war. And as a consequence, with Denmark being on the losing side, Denmark had to give Norway to Sweden. Of course, a lot of some Norwegians saw this as a great opportunity. They saw this as an opportunity to declare independence, to select their own king, and to select their own constitution. And that's what Norway did. Norway, Norway gathered at Eidsvoll to sign their very own constitution in May 1814. And this became historic and a funding period of the nation of Norway. I mean, Norway had of course existed as, existed as a country thousand years before then, but now it, Norway became a modern nation when this constitution was signed. And Sweden, of course, didn't entirely accept this. So uh, they invaded parts of Norway later that year, but thankfully it ended with peace uh, after a few months, a few weeks, months. And, uh, and, uh, and it ended with Sweden and Norway entering a union, but Norway was nonetheless still freer in this union than we had been under Denmark. And Norway had now taken some very important steps on the path to independence and the fight for independ full independence will continue and in 1905 it would succeed because when the union with Sweden was dissolved and Norway became fully independent. But 1814 was the beginning of all of this. So that's why 1814 is such an important date in Norwegian history. And it's the year 1814 which our constitution or national day is based on, the 17th of May. Anyway, so that's some Norwegian history for you. Anyway, um, I'm going to move on to a different book. Silmarillion. Silmarillion. So this is from the Lord of the Rings author, J.R.R. Tolkien. He also wrote The Hobbit, by the way. And uh, actually, it's I believe it is... Well, also it says here uh, Tolkien, I believe Tolkien's son also sort of added something to his work and sort of finished it because I'm not entirely sure about the story around that but I believe it was something like that. But anyway, the Silmarillion is sort of the backstory of the entire Lord of the Rings universe. I haven't actually read it yet but I may plan to do that one day. Uh, so this sort of chronicles all the millennia and stories what happened before the age of the Hobbit, the age of Lord of the Rings. So uh, this is really the hist a history book 
for the history of Middle Earth, the Middle Earth University. So, uh, so this is. So if you're really a fan of lore, if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit books, maybe the movies of the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, and you know, and a fan of the Middle Earth universe, and you're curious about the lore and all the stories that preceded uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, then this is probably a book for you. Now, I haven't read, read it, so I can't say much about it. I just know it contains various stories from earlier ages of Middle Earth history. So, anyway. Are we going to move on? Yeah. Oh, We're going to move on. Here it says in Norwegian, Eventyrskatter. And what it says is uh, fairy tale treasures in English. And this book contains various fairy tales. It contains Asbjørnsen og Moe, which is the Norwegian fairy tales, often featuring trolls and stuff like that, and everything which fits with the Norwegian culture. Then you have H.C. Andersen, the Danish author, who wrote Danish fairy tales. You have the Brothers Grimm, you know those people who I believe are from around Germany and stuff like that. You know European fairy tales. And then you have Thousand and One Night, which is Arabic fairy tales. And so this book contains a lot of fairy tales, essentially. It's a book I got as a child, and, you know, when I was a child, my dad would often read uh, fairy tales from this book for me. So this book contains fond memories for me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, this book is really nice to open, but it sort of has, it really has the whole fairy tale quality. As it probably does. There are some pictures in this book too. Uh, I haven't read or heard all of the various fairy tales yet, but I've heard some of them. So we can see here. Pictures. Pictures. Ooh. And it really smells sort of a little old when you open the book, so it smells kind of like something old and a little ancient, which sort of fits with the wall fairy tale. Okay, let's see if I can find. Here you have another uh, nice illustration. So this book is full of illustrations. Full of illustrations. But let's see if we can find an Norwegian fairy tale somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just humming a little while I'm Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go into the description. Okay, we have to go to 117. Mm -hmm. To go far into the book. Yeah, I think that's. Here you have a cool illustration. A cool illustration. You can see it. You can find another illustration before we move on. So there are lots of fairy tales in the book, including Norwegian fairy tales. I was primarily the ones my dad read for me when I was a child. And Norwegian fairy tales features trolls and Norwegian Nordic type of stuff. It was the fairy tale, when I look back at them, many of Norwegian fairy tales, all talk very often have happy endings. They're kind of a little dark, of course, that's often the case for many of the original fairy tales, but I believe that Norwegian ones perhaps more so than most. <laughs> but you know, it's, I guess it goes, fits with the wall Norwegian beam. Here you have uh, a guy called for Smurbok, who is uh, and Smurbok is a fairy tale character who a boy who a hag, an evil hag, wanted to eat. And you can see the boy and the hag here. You, you can, you, yeah, I can show you guys. Uh, you can see here. Here is the boy and there is the hag. 
and she wants to eat him. So she's trying to trick him into coming home with her so she can cook him and eat him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So she's kind of like that witch from Hansel and Gretel. If you, in the sense that she likes to eat children. Anyway. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah. But. Uh, yeah. Some of you probably wonder if I will ever read a Norwegian fairy tale for you guys, for you guys someday. Yes, maybe. I may translate a Norwegian fairy tale and read it in English. I have believe I've done so once before, a year ago, and I may do so again. Later on, probably after me or two. Okay, okay I'm going to put it this way. Okay, there are two more books to go. This is something, Julebok, and what it actually means in English is Christmas book. Jul is the Norwegian word for Christmas. Julebok, Christmas book. This contains lots of various Christmas themes and stuff. You can see it has a picture of an angel on it, and it's sort of everything you need for Christmas from Norwegian verses, Christmas verses, Norwegian songs, Christmas songs, and stuff like that. And also things for the time of Advent. And Advent in Norway is the time leading up to Christmas. And the color of Advent is purple actually. I'll talk more about Norwegian Christmas stuff in upcoming Christmas videos in this. Uh, so there are lots of things here. There are some verses uh, and stuff. And, you know some Christmas stories and stuff like that. So, you can see here, here are the Advent verses. Here is the Advent verses, which I actually often, uh, often mention, which, which I often read out loud uh, on Sundays uh, during December when we light the candles. We sort of light one candle each Sunday, it's sort of traditional, I'll explain it yet. Maybe in a later video, maybe. Uh, this book doesn't have a lot of illustrations, mostly text. So there are also some recipes here for various, for various uh, Christmas stuff, cakes and all and stuff like that. So, that it often has this Often on the sides, on certain pages, it has this nice blue color. And, you know. So this is a book for everyone who loves Christmas and Norwegian Christmas traditions. There is one or well, two more books to go, but I'm sort of going to take them in one because they're very thin. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it. going to show them to you. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. So this is a two books, a Norwegian editions of Harry Potter books. This, this is Quidditch Through the Ages. And this is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and their lore books. I've read them both. Uh, Quidditch Through the Ages features everything you need to know about Quidditch. The magical sport in the Harry Potter universe of Quidditch and its history. And uh, yeah. And while Fantastic Beasts is written by Nivt Scamander. And, uh, and you know, that's the main character of the Fantastic Beast movies. But in the Wizarding World, he wrote a book called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The book he is working on in the movies. And Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a lore book featuring lore about the various beasts and history of these beasts in the Wizarding World. So these are both sort of lore books that sort of add to the Harry Potter Wizarding World. So if you're curious about magical beasts or Quidditch and want to add to the lore of the Harry Potter universe, I'd advise getting, see if you can find these books somewhere. Mm. 
I believe I come in most languages really. In all this, obviously English, which is a standard version, but I'm sure there are a lot of translated versions of them too. Anyway, so yeah. So, well, I hope you guys just enjoyed me talking about various books I have read and haven't read, and just found this an enjoyable book tour type of video. Wish you guys all the best and thank you so much for letting me show you these books today and for watching and listening. Thank you. Wish you the best.